Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Commander in Chief. Now, Commander in Chief of the now 10 year old organization, the EFL. At times, the simplest of tasks are the most difficult to execute. And the difficulty in execution hides the rich simplicity within. A few words and the whole atmosphere in the house is no longer the same. You silently contemplate and resolve what to say and what not to say. We take this opportunity once again, Commander in Chief, to acknowledge you as the leader of this movement, the National Chairperson of the EFL, Dominica Mente, the Treasurer General, Ompile Mauti, the Secretary General, the DSG, the Commissars from the Central Command Team, the leaders of provinces and the leaders of regions, but most importantly, the ground forces of the EFF. We have this simple yet difficult task of introducing one of Africa's great Pan-Africanists, an academic, a lawyer, a professor, and one of the greatest orators in our time. So Professor Patrick Locke Otieni Lumumba is from the African continent. He was born in Kenya and has got a great knowledge and understanding of the African continent. He is an advocate of the long overdue need of the integration of the entire African continent. We take this opportunity in his presence to once again say thank you and convey our gratitude that three years ago during the hard lockdowns of COVID-19, Professor Lumumba came to the EFL virtual space to present one of the most memorable and outstanding lectures of Pan-Africanism. From what he said three years ago and what he continues to say in different platforms, we as the EFF are more than convinced that Professor Pierre Paul Lumumba is part of us, the Pan-Africanist Progressive Forces, who seek to reverse all the decisions of the Berlin Conference which met on the 15th of November 1884 and concluded after adjournment on the 26th of February 1885. That is the colonial conference that subdivided the continent into small and viable states and political dependencies. The colonialism that continues to define us to this day. We can safely say that Professor Pierre Paul Lumumba can be counted amongst the great Pan-Africanist revolutionaries like Walter Rodney of Guyana, like George Padmore of Trinidad and Tobago, like Robert Subuke, like Ahmed Ben Bella, like Amy Serai, Serai like Thomas Isidoro Sankara, like Miriam Makeba, like Julius Nyerere, like Amelka Cabral, like W.E.B. Du Bois, like Gamal Abdel Nezer, like Franz Fanon, like Ahmed Sokotori, like Impera Hini Selassie, like Emperor Patrice Lumumba, like Marcus Bad, and most importantly, like Norman Moon. Professor Lumumba, the EFF is a totally pan Africanist organization who are taking 10 years today. We have had the honor of inviting you to deliver this 10th anniversary lecture. So we say to you now, the Commander-in-Chief, Commissars, Fighters, Africans, in the African continent and African diaspora, we present to you a great Pan-Africanist, a leader in his own right, a founder of many foundations that are helping many people in the African continent. We present to you the greatest Pan-Africanist of our time, Professor P. A. O. Numa. The stage is yours. Viva! 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 
Economic freedom fighters became a movement in this part of the world. Ten years ago, her leaders, led by the President and the Commander in Chief Julia Selo Malema, sat down and determined that South Africa must take a different direction. Ten years ago, he put together many great young men and women who now bestride the South African political terrain like the fabled Colossus organized in different formations, headed by the commissars who are here present, who might salute, supported by the fighters on the ground who might salute, because in the last ten years you've done a great job. In the days when you started, there were those who doubted, those who assumed that you were just but a flickering flame which would disappear, but you refused to disappear. <laughs> Ten years ago, there are those who thought that you are a passing cloud, you refused to pass. Ten years ago, there are those who thought that you are mere irritation. You have continued to irritate as you must. <laughs> Ten years ago, South Africa did not know who you are today. They recognize who you are. I am happy to be in this land. This land in the Cape which as a young man I was taught was the Cape of Good Hope. And I have no doubt that there is good hope today, and we shall talk about that Cape of Good Hope. I am here and happy to be in the land of great Africans, some of whom are alive and some of whom are long gone. It is not lost on me that this is the land that produced People like Pixley Kaisa Kaseme, whom we never talk about as often as we should. And as I talk to you today and talk about EFF, I cannot forget that in the year 1906, in the United States of America, that Pixley Kaisa Kaseme said that we must regenerate Africa, and regenerate Africa we will. This is the land that produced to the world and to South Africa Albert Lutuli, who came and played his part. This is the land that produced Robert Mangaliso Sobukwe, that great man of whom we never say much, of whom when he was asked, he said the only race in the world is the human race. That man came out of this land. I cannot forget that this is the land that produced Bantu Stephen Biko, whom we never mention as often as we do. I cannot forget that this is the very same land that produced Winnie Mandela, that great woman that we never talk about. Oh, I cannot forget that this is the land that produced Albertina Sisulu. I cannot forget. I cannot forget that this is the very same land that produced Chris Hani. I cannot forget. I cannot forget that this is the land that produced Nelson Mandela. I cannot forget. I cannot forget that this is the land that produced Solomon Mahalangu. This is that land. I cannot forget that this is the very same land that produced Tiro Mopot. I cannot forget. 
And I cannot forget that this is the very same land that has pr produced Lord Shiva. Oh, I cannot forget. I cannot forget that this is the same land that has produced Dr. Andalo. I cannot forget. I cannot forget that it's the very same land that has produced Veronica. I cannot forget. I cannot forget that, that this is the very same land that has produced one of the highest, hottest ions in Africa today, Julius Seno. So today, as we are gathered here today, we must ask ourselves that what is the state of our continent? What is the state of Pan-Africanism? I remember so very vividly in this land, in this South Africa, in this land where one of the greatest crimes ever committed by man was unleashed, the crime of apartheid. In this land, there came men who, in their misguided view, took the view that the black man was the child of a lesser God. They introduced one of the most egregious crimes ever known to man. They committed crimes of man's inhumanity to man. For many years, this land suffered under the yoke of apartheid. But you are not alone. Before that, the African was subjected to slavery. Our kith and kin were taken away, taken away into different parts of the world. They were taken away to Europe. They built Europe. They were taken away to the United States of America. They built the United States of America. They were taken away to the Caribbean. They built the Caribbean. Then after slavery had lost its lust and attraction, they pretended to burn slavery. But it came again in a different form. And sitting in Berlin in 1884 and 1885, those same diabolical peoples divided our continent into little pieces. They came here. The Dutch were here. They went to what is now Namibia. The Germans were here. They went to Angola and Mozambique and Guinea-Bissau and Cabo Verde, the Portuguese were here. They came to Nyasaland. They came to what was then Rhodesia and Zambia. And they went to Kenya and Uganda and Ghana and Nigeria and Sierra Leone and Gambia. The British were here. Then the French also came. They were here. They went to Dahomey, now Benin, to Togo, to Cameroon, to Côte d'Ivoire, to Senegal, to Mauritania, to Algeria. The French were here. The Italians were here. They came to Somalia. They went to Libya. They were here. The Belgians were here. They went to Congo. The Spanish were here. They went to Sao Tome and the Principe, they were here. The Belgians, of course, and the Germans went to Rwanda and Urundi, they were here. All of them were here. And what they did was to remind us, if we needed reminding at all, that they were here to stay. They abused us. We fought against them wherever they were. The Mau Mau fought them in Kenya. They fought them in Tanganyika. They fought them in Ghana. And we defeated them and we started regaining our independence. I can still hear those immortal words. 
of the Osatie for Kwame Nkrumah on the 6th day of March 1957 in Accra, Ghana, telling his Ghanaian peoples that the independence of Ghana means nothing if the rest of Africa is not independent. I can hear the Osagie for Kwame Nkrumah convening a meeting in 1958 and telling Africans we must unite now because if we don't unite, we will be manipulated. Nobody listened to the Osagie for. I can hear the Osagie for once again in 1916, Casablanca, Morocco, accompanied as he was by King Idris of Libya on that day. In their presence was Ahmed Sekoture of Guinea. In their presence was King Hassan of Morocco, reminding Africa once again that we must unite. But they listened to him now. I can hear the Osagie for again on the 24th day of May 1963 in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, telling the 32 heads of state gathered in Addis Ababa, we must unite now. We must have one army. We must have one currency. We must have one foreign policy. We must be united. And I can hear the Osagie for saying, I do not want to be the leader of that country, I simply want unity. And I am saying that we must live here with one united government. They listen not to the Osagie for. And you know, they did not stop there. Because the diabolical and subterranean Huns were alive then. No sooner had we regained political independence, as we were celebrating our new national anthems, as we were celebrating our new flag, as we were celebrating our new mottos and slogans, the neo-colonizer was alive and well. In 1961, they had taken out Patrice Emery Lumumba. And I can remember that famous letter of Patrice Emery Lumumba written in 1961. One day, even if you kill my body, Africa shall write our history. Today we are here to write that history. I can hear, even as they took out Patrice Semery Lumumba, and in 1963 they took out Silvanus Olympio in Togo. I can hear Silvanus Olympio say, take me out, but Africa shall not be taken out. I'm here to remind us that Africa shall not be taken out. They did not stop there. In 1966, they took out the Osagie for Kwame Nkrumah and took him out of power and thought that they had finished the Osagie for. And I can hear and read the Osagie for writing from Guinea in Conakry say, Africa shall never be enslaved again. We are here to remind them that we shall never be enslaved again. And they did not stop there. They went to Nigeria. And Nigeria, they took out the government of Namdi, Azikiwe, and Abubakar Tafawa Balewa. And they thought that they had finished Nigeria. They did not, because Africa can never be finished. They did not stop there. They went to Mali and they thought that they had taken out Modibo Keita and they thought that Mali would not be taken out. They did not take Mali out. They did not stop there. They went to Algeria and took out Ahmed Ben Bella and they thought that Algeria would be taken out. They did not take Algeria out. But the neo-colonial project is alive and well. 
because even as that was happening, South Africa was still under the yoke of the apartheid regime. And I can hear the words of the great South Africans at that time as a young student. I can still remember the words of Oartam. I can still remember from Angola the words of Agostino Neto. I can still remember the words of Eduardo Mondlane and Samora Moises Marshall. I can still remember the words of Sam Nuyoma and Andy Mbaham and Toivo Ya Toivo from Namibia. I can still remember. And ultimately, you succeeded in removing the organ, the monster that was apartheid. In Zimbabwe, I can still remember Joshua Nkomo and Robert Mugabe, and they removed that monster that was the Ian Smith regime. But the question is, once we removed them, what did we do? This is the question. You know, when we remove them, we make unto ourselves many promises. We promise unto ourselves heaven, but sometimes it appears as if the devils in heaven conspired and delivered hell instead of heaven. So that the story of Africa is a story of missed opportunities. We sing our national anthems as we should. We fly our flags as we should. We have our slogans as we should. But yet, we have fallen short of the expectations of both God and man. That is why, when I look at Africa today, sometimes, I feel sad, and many are those times when I see young Africans from the Gambia, from Burkina Faso, from Chad, from Nigeria, from Ghana, being humiliated in Tunisia, being humiliated and dying in the Mediterranean Sea. I feel sad. I feel sad. When young Africans are humiliated in Saudi Arabia and Kuwait, I feel sad. I feel sad when young Africans are humiliated at the embassies of Western countries. I feel sad when young Africans play lottery to become citizens of the United States of America. I feel sad. I feel sad when young Africans think that grass is greener on the other side. I feel sad. I feel sad when the white man comes here and humiliates us. I feel sad. I feel sad when the Chinese come here and humiliate us. I feel sad. I know not whether you feel sad with me, but I'm inviting you to feel sad with me. I feel sad when our continent is abused by other civilizations. I feel sad. But for how long shall we merely feel sad? For how long shall we lament? For how long shall we mourn? For how long shall we agonize? For how long? This is why I understand the economic freedom fighter. This is why, this is why I'm here with you to celebrate your 10th anniversary. This is why I think you are doing the right thing. Because 10 years ago you made the correct diagnosis. You, now you made the correct diagnosis. You discovered that they gave us the crown without the jewels. You discover that they gave us an empty vessel. You discovered that political freedom in and of itself is empty. 
you discover that you cannot, in the words of Martin Luther King Jr., ask a person with no legs and no boots to lift himself or herself by the bootstraps. You recognize that. You discover that we must rediscover ourselves, that we must re-educate ourselves. You discovered and gave meaning to those famous words of the great Nigerian singer Femi Anikula Pokuti when he said, Teacher, don't teach me nonsense because we have been taught nonsense for too long. You discovered and said it as he did, Carter G. Woodson in 1933, that we had been miseducated for too long and that we ought to re-educate ourselves. You discovered with my countryman, Gugi Wathiongo, that we must decolonize our minds. You discovered with Chinua Achebe that we have been divided and things are falling apart. That is why you are here today. So we are here to celebrate, because celebrate we must. We are here to commemorate, because commemorate we must. But we are here also to remind our enemies, and there is no shortage of them out there. There is no shortage of them. They come in the thousands, they come in the millions. But history has taught us and is teaching us always that we shall triumph. Oh, we cannot fail. We cannot afford the luxury of not say failing. Oh, we cannot. I hear our enemies saying that we are saying too much. We will continue to say we have not talked enough. And if they wonder why we are saying what we are saying, let them go even to their holy books. And we are told in the beginning there was the Word, and the Word was with God. We are giving meaning to the Word, and all those, those of them who are Muslims will be reminded that the very first thing that the angel Jibril called, told the prophet Muhammad is Ikra, read, and he read, and he made a speech, and we are making the speeches. We will continue to talk, but we will also act. So we are here today that there may be a wedding between our words and actions. Here in South Africa, there are many doubting Thomases. Oh, but they are reducing by the number. They are reducing because when they watch the EFF, in the National Assembly of South Africa, they are reducing by the number. They are reducing by the number. Because when they watch the EFF, they do not only see courage, they see passion. And they fear courage and passion. But we must instill fear in them. Because it is only when they are fearful that they will begin to give way. And when they begin to give way, then we will begin to conquer new territory because new territory we must conquer. You know, this continent, you know, this South Africa, this South Africa which has given birth to the EFF is the anchor of the continent of Africa. This South Africa is the southernmost tip of the continent of Africa. This South Africa is the fulcrum of Africa. This South Africa will be the place that will give good hope to the continent of Africa. This South Africa, this South Africa of EFF, is the one that is going to economically regenerate Africa. I remember. In 1980, Africans sat in Lagos, Nigeria, and they came up with the Lagos Plan of Action and said, under the Lagos Plan of Action, that Africa was going to economically regenerate herself. I remember them saying that Africa will trade with herself, that Africa will buy our own gold, 
that Africa will trade with our own cocoa, that Africa will produce our wine, that Africa will produce and consume our uranium, the Lagos plan of action did not succeed. But is it not true that failure or apparent failure is the mother of success? If it is true, we did not give up. Because I remember in 1997, on the sixth day of March, to be exact, that great African, that great Tanzanian Walimu Julius Kambaragi Nyerere, speaking in Accra, Ghana, on the occasion of the 40th anniversary of the independence of Ghana, said, I remember, he said, that a few years ago, we doubted Kwame Nkrumah when he talked about unity. We must now apologize to Kwame. He was right. We were wrong. But we have now recognized the mistakes that we made. We will meet many challenges, but of all the sins that we can commit, there is a single sin that we must never commit. The sin of despair. The sin of giving up. EFF is the representation of our failure, refusal to give up. You know, on that day, Mwalimu said, every generation has a role to play. My generation is the generation that led the struggle for independence. Your generation must now fight a different battle. The battle of economic emancipation. And that is the battle that we are here to fight. And I remember once again, this land is in the business of producing good men and women. In the year 2013, you produce yet another woman, Nukosazan and Lamini Zuma. And you gave her the task of being the chair of the African Union, and she wrote a letter to the Osagie for Kwame Nkrumah. Said, Osagie for, we ask for your forgiveness, and that is how we came up with Africa Agenda 2063 and the Africa Continent of Free Trade Area. Under those documents, we are promising ourselves that Africa shall be economically emancipated because we cannot allow ourselves to be under the tutelage of the International Monetary Fund. We cannot, and we must not. We must not allow ourselves to be slaves of the World Bank. We must not. We must not allow ourselves to be told who our friends are and who our enemies are and what we should and should not do. We cannot be the tail that is wagged by the dog all the time. The time has come that we must do the things that are in our best interest. And that will only happen when we are economically emancipated. You know... They say that he or she who pays the piper calls the tune. For too long we have not paid the piper. We must now pay our piper that we may call the tune. EFF, you are now telling us how to pay the piper. You are now telling us that going forward we must now economically emancipate ourselves. We cannot be a continent whose greatest claim to fame is that we are in the business of borrowing. We have borrowed for too long. We've been abused for too long. And the time therefore is now for this spirit of the EFF to spread. Ten years ago, when my good friend Julius Shalom Alem and his comrades in arm sat somewhere here in South Africa and the revelation was given unto them that the last colonial question was economic emancipation. It was a revelation. And they said that we must have economic freedom 
in our lifetime. This idea that economic freedom is a pie in the sky that we only dream about is without basis. We can get it now. We cannot be a continent where our economies are dominated by the smallest proportion of the population. We cannot be, and we must not be. And the economic freedom fighters are urging you that we must now be in the business of spreading this message to the rest of the continent. I'm now urging you, my good friend, Juju. I'm now urging you and your comrades in arms. This spirit must now spread. This spirit must have a foothold in Johannesburg. It must. Or it must have a foothold in Maseru, in Lesotho, it must. Or it must climb up to Mbambane, in Eswatini. Or it must go to Maputo, in Mozambique. Or it must go to Bilhok, in Namibia. Or it must climb up to Lilongwe, in Malawi. It must go to Lusaka, in Zambia. It must go to Luanda, in Angola. It must go to Kampala, in Uganda. It must go to Hargeisa in Somaliland. Oh, it must not stop there. It must go to Nairobi in Kenya. It must go to Dodoma in Tanzania. No, it must not stop there. It must go to Kinshasa. Oh, it must go to Bangui. Oh, it must go to Lome. It must go to Kotonou. Oh, it must not stop there. It must go to Juba and to Addis Ababa and to Asmara and to Sudan in Khartoum, it must go to Cairo, or it must not stop there, it must go to Tunis in Tunisia, or it must go to Njamena, it must go to Ouagadougou, it must go to Nwafchat, it must go to Accra, or it must go to Monrovia, or it must go to Rabat, or it must go to Algiers, it must go to Monrovia, it must go everywhere in Africa, this spirit must go there. It is only, it is only when that spirit is present in every part of Africa that we shall shake Africa. When it is there, we shall no longer have visas in Africa. No, we shall not. Oh, when it is there, we shall no longer have the run. No, no. We shall no longer have all these currencies. There shall only be one currency and we shall be economically liberated. Oh, it shall happen, and it must happen. Because if it doesn't happen, we will not allow it to happen. You know, sometimes there are those who think it cannot happen. Oh, but they are mistaken. They are mistaken because I remember those words of the great Ghanaian James Emmons Kwejiragri. And I remember the little story that he used to tell, the story of the chicken and the story of the eagle. And Kwejir Agri used to tell us that there was a chicken farmer and that this chicken farmer had chicken. And that one day some of the chicks wandered into the wilderness and when they came back, there was amongst them the cheek of an eagle. And he fed them on chicken feed for a long time. And one day, a naturalist came and saw the eaglet and said, This is an eagle amongst chicken. And the farmer said, Yes, it is an eaglet. But we have fed it on chicken feed for too long. It is no longer an eagle. And the farmer said no, or the naturalist said no, once an eagle, always an eagle. And he tried to put it on the palm of his hand and it refused to fly. And the poultry farmer said, I told you, it was once an eagle. We have fed it on chicken feed for a long time. It has lost its eaglehood. It has acquired chickenhood. 
the naturalist came back and said, let me try again. And he put it on the palm of his hand and it flew away. And he turned to the farmer and said, I told you, once an eagle, even if you feed it on chicken feed, it will remain an eagle. Oh, they thought that they had fed us on chicken feed. We are eagles and we shall fly and we shall soar and we shall be economically liberated. And when we are economically liberated, we shall be equal with everybody in the world, if not better. And we must be. And you who are in the economic freedom fighters movement now, I am telling you, those of you who are from different parts of South Africa, go out there. Because if indeed there is a spirit, is the spirit of economic liberation. Let that spirit now descend. Let us be possessed with that spirit. Let us go out into the world and tell all the doubting Thomases that it shall never be the same again. That it shall never be the same again. Because from here and now, we are taking a solemn vow that from this generation and generations yet to be born, we shall liberate Africa by ensuring that the chains of economic colonization are removed. And you in the EFF, you the fighters, you the commissars, you the commander-in-chief, go out there. And tell South Africa and the world that the next 10 years are the 10 years of total liberation. The next 10 years are the years of liberation. You know, we have complained for too long. We are not going to complain anymore. We have organized for too long. We are not going to agonize anymore. We have moralized for too long. We are not going to moralize anymore. We have philosophized for too long. We are not going to philosophize anymore. We have intellectualized for too long. We are not going to intellectualize anymore. We are going to act. And that is why we are going to give meaning to those famous words, Amanla! Gawetu! Amanda, Gawetu, Maibuye, I Africa, Maibuye, I Africa, Viva, I Viva, I Viva, I